Okay, this lesson builds on the mole concept built through the atomic structure that we've talked about in class or had you review. Mole concept is very important to understand before we get into analytical chemistry because we're going to be analyzing percent by masses in this worksheet. And percent by masses stay constant in compounds because they have a unique amount of atoms in their chemical formula. Therefore, the percent by mass of each type of element or different type of atom, okay, will be uh, unique. And we can analyze compounds and determine their chemical formulas because of this consistency or the static nature of percent by masses of different elements because of compounds having unique chemical formulas or being arranged by atoms. So all of this that we do analytically that we're going to be spending the first third of the year on is based on mole concept. And we have covered that extensively through the atomic structure. Now our atomic structure begins with light. We'll go into a different area. But this is where all this is based upon. So to analyze what this compound is, what its chemical formula is, we're going to take some experimental data that we could get through the lab. And we've gotten percent by mass information through other laboratory work. Remember, um, we did a percent by mass of water in a hydrate. And we can get percentages of water. And remember, last year, we built a chemical formula or determined the chemical formula of a hydrate based on the mass of the hydrate and hydrate in the water. So we're doing some of the similar things here. So we're going to start with the percent by masses. And let's do that. So I have 41.41% oxygen. Okay, as I've talked about before, uh, very simply, this can be converted directly into grams if I assume a 100-gram sample. And I can assume any gram sample. I could assume a 1,000-gram sample or a 180-gram sample, except I'd be doing more work. Since I'm going to assume a 100-gram sample, all right, make that assumption, then my percentages, okay, can go directly into grams, something we've dealt with before. So 41%, I'm sorry, 41.41% oxygen becomes 41.41 grams of oxygen. And I'm going to write the other ones down here. And voila, there are the other three. So I just to save some time, I converted the percentages also into grams. All right, now, now that I have grams of my 100-gram sample, all right, and by the way, if you're doing laboratory work, okay, you could just take the grams from the laboratory work and go from there, okay? But since I'm just giving you the percentages from someone else's work, we have to convert. But in any case, the next step to build a chemical formula, because we're after the empirical formula, which we should know is the lowest ratio. And from percentages, we can only get the lowest ratio. We don't know about multiples. Case in point, if you get 50% of one element and 50% of another element, you don't know if that's, um, uh, you know that there's 50% by mass of one element and one others, but you don't know what the actual ratio of atoms are. So you can only know the lowest whole number mass ratio. So uh, the multiple idea is something that will come up with the molecular formula. So percentages from uh, experiments can only build empirical. We need to have another experiment that gives me the molecular mass, which we'll see in this course that we did not see last year. So in any case, what I'm going to do, party people, is I'm going to now convert this into moles since moles represent a how many number and it's a unique ratio of how many of one atom to another I have to see what the ratio I'd have to put these numbers I'm sorry into a how many number and that's where the mole concept comes in so I'm converting to moles like we've done before and I know that one mole equals how many grams of oxygen well we're gonna to go to our periodic tables okay and if you go to your periodic tables and this is the new tables that you would have we're going to use these values, and I see that oxygen has an atomic mass of 16. So these are the um, AP chemi uh, chemistry reference tables. So here's the atomic mass here, 16 grams. All right. So we put 16 grams. All right, let's go find that number. All right, so 41.41 .41 
okay, divide, times at 1 divided by 16 uh, gives me 2.5. 881, I'm just going to carry all the raw numbers, as many as I feel like, okay? Because I'm trying to find a close value. So I'm going to convert all of these to moles now, and I'm not going to walk you through them. So uh, stop your video, do them, or I'm going to do that in a couple seconds. And voila, there they are, in all their glory. I converted all of these compounds, grams, to moles. Okay, notice I got rid of grams. All right, great. Now that I know the moles of all of these, okay, and this tells me how many, in comparison to each other, okay, or in this case, just how many grams equals how many moles, and moles is how many. The next step is to find the ratio. To find a ratio of how many compared to each other, I'm going to divide by the smallest number. So the smallest number here is 0.1984, okay, as far as I'm concerned. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to um, divide by the smallest number, which is itself 0.1984 this is going to give me a 1 I'm going to divide this number by 0.1984 let's go find that number I'm just dividing by the smallest number to find the ratio of how many of atoms compared to each other this gives me 0.977 but that's really close to 1, so that's approximately 1 to me is, I'm sorry, that should not be right. Sorry about that. So, of course, that is going to equal 4.923, which is close enough to make that equal to 5. Okay, we're going to divide this by the smallest number. And if I was to look for the ratio of how tall everyone was compared to me, I'd be the 1 and everyone else would be the fraction. Okay, so we divide by the smallest number. So I guess if we wanted to see whole number differences in height in our class, we divide by the smallest person, shortest person. I'm not sure who that is this year. But in any case, uh, what was that? Point five nine seven three five divided by point one nine eight four and of course that gives me three point zero one which is close enough for three okay and of course we divide this by the smallest number point one nine eight Four, and we get 2.5881 divided by 0 0.1984, 1984, and I get 13.04, and 13.04 is approximately approximately 13. You may say, Mr. Grosky, why isn't it coming out exactly? Well, it's not coming out exactly because I didn't keep all these raw numbers. Right? I, I definitely stopped and I rounded my raw numbers at some point. Not only that, there was definitely some rounding in these percentages. Right? If you add these percentages, I bet you don't get, well, maybe you do get 100, but sometimes they round these percentages as well. Not only that, these percentages come from what? Experiments. And experiments are never perfect. There's always some limitations in them. So these numbers will get close. Okay. Now, if you got a, uh, you know, like 3.5 or something close to 3.5, you can't round that to a whole number. That's the only place you'd ever see where you'd have to double everything. So this was 3.5 or 3.49. To get a whole number, you can't round off or add a half of an atom. What you'd have to do is you'd have to multiply everything by 2. So in this case, this is the ratio I get. So my uh, empirical, again, you're only going to get the lowest whole number ratio. Why? Because we're dividing by the smallest number to get that ratio. So you're only going to come up with that. So let's build our empirical formula. All right. And let's go with calcium. Uh, and our calcium is 5. Uh, let's go with uh, PO4. Let's do an H in front. H1. Now, who came first and second wouldn't matter in this case if you couldn't figure out how this would work. And then you'd have your phosphorus. Okay, phosphorus would be your 3. And then you'd have uh, your oxygen 
with your 13. And this would be your empirical. Now, if you had hydrogen first, phosphorus first, oxygen first, it would not matter. What would matter is how many of each of these whole number atoms were in this compound that was tested this way. That is all that would be. Okay? Now, that's the lowest ratio. Remember, that's the empirical. And that's the only thing you can get through this work that we're going to do through different laboratories uh, assignments. Okay, so this is the lowest ratio. And it should make sense. That's the only thing you can get from this type of data. Data. Now, from another experiment, which we will be doing in the laboratory this year, we can find the actual molecular mass, the mass per one mole. So all we have here is the ratio of different types of atoms in the compound, but we do not have the actual ratio that could exist in nature called the molecular formula. All right. So we need another experiment, and this other experiment gives us the molecular mass to be 1,004. Now, how do we come up with the molecular formula? Well, I call it the box question, and here's how I built it. Okay, I took a box, and certainly this is taught in many different ways, but I do the molecular formula up top, and I go over this in the, those mole concept videos, and I put the empirical on the bottom. Why do I put the empirical on the bottom? Because the lowest ratio. So I want to put the empirical formula again. Calcium 5, hydrogen 1, phosphorus 3, O13. Okay, now I'm looking for this value, the molecular formula. I do know that the uh, molecular mass is 1,004 grams. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the empirical mass. That's right. So I'm going to find the mass per one mole of this compound. So I'm going to take five times the molecular mass of calcium. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to take five times um, 40.8. I'm going to add that to one hydrogen and then three, pho three phosphorus and then um, 13 oxygen. So I'm going to add that together right here. So we're going to find a an empirical mass. I can stop the video. I'm going to put that number. Right, so when I do the um, empirical mass by multiplying 5 times 40.8 plus 1 times 1.8 plus 3 times 30.97 plus 13 times 16, I get 504.41. And you should realize that this is approximately twice that. So to go from this number to here, it's times by two. Now it's not perfect, and the reasoning behind that is the same reasoning why these ratios aren't perfect because of rounding and because we get this data from an experiment. But we can say this is just about a whole number difference. So if we generally multiply this by two to get to this number, we're multiplying this by two. So, so that's calcium 10. H2, phosphorus 6, oxygen 16, and that is your molecular formula, how it exists in nature. Okay, so I hope that helps by reviewing that part. Okay.